Hello, today I'm going to be doing a review of the Mead DS2090 AT-TC. It's got a 90 millimeter aperture as well as a self-guided computer system which allows beginners to navigate the sky easily. This was my first telescope and I chose this one because of Mead's reputation as well as the size of the aperture. I was hoping that I could see more objects compared to other telescopes with uh, similar specs but with smaller aperture size. Now this telescope has a focal length of 800 millimeters and a, uh, an aperture diameter of 90 millimeters giving it a focal ratio of 8.8 .8. that would be considered a slow focal ratio which isn't a bad thing it just means it's going to be more forgiving on eyepieces uh, conveniently they gave me well the package came with five eyepieces now if I were to upgrade anything on this telescope it would be the eyepieces because the provided eyepieces are um, what's called um, the MA series from Mead these are the modified acromats they're not that bad they're okay for beginners but uh, I would suggest that you purchase plossels uh, if you're want, gonna want to keep this telescope one of my favorite features about this telescope is its go-to capability it has a computer control system that allows me to select the object of my choice from this uh, keypad and it's going to slew to that, towards that object but before I can do that in each session I would have to set it up first and uh, I'm just going to show you how to do that the kit comes with a compass and a level so there's a bubble in there somewhere so what you do is uh, you can put it here or you can put it in the tray but uh, what they recommend is that you put it in the eyepiece you put it in here get it level and you point the telescope to the north you put the keypad into the HBX port and you turn it on okay so that's what it looks like right now it says press 0 to align so I'm gonna align it press 0 and I'm just gonna hit enter here it's just instruct me to make sure it's level and that it's pointed north hit enter now it's swinging toward Arcturus Now because I already programmed it so that it knows where I am, uh, it knows where Arcturus is and the general, all, the general direction of Arcturus. And then now that it's beat like that, it means it's pointing to, it thinks it's pointing to Arcturus. But what I need to do is look into the eyepiece and try to center Arcturus using these keypad buttons. So I can hit left or right, up or down until it's centered and once it's centered I hit enter again it's going to select the next star for more accuracy I was trying to swim towards Vega and after that it says alignment successful now I can choose the mode I want by hitting mode I can select an object or let's see Enter. I can choose a solar system object Mercury I can choose oops Venus Mars or any solar system of any planet I can hit mode to go back I can choose a constellation a deep sky object 
a star, a satellite, or a user object which I can program. So I thought that was pretty cool. If you want to use a telescope manually, which is a lot more fun for me anyway, uh, you can also do that. So what you need to do is you make sure that your finder, this is the finder scope, is aligned with your telescope. So a good example would be you set it out outside and look for uh, a distant object such as um, the top of someone's roof. You point this at, make sure that there's a red dot in there, make sure that the red dot is pointed at the top of the roof. Look through your viewfinder, make sure that it's also pointing at the exact same point. There's an adjustment screw on the left side. After that, if you want to start looking at an object, I suggest you start off with a low power eyepiece such as the 25 millimeter. Put it inside the focuser, tighten up the screw, and adjust focus until you find just the right amount of focus. You can go past focus when you reach focus and go a little bit past it until it becomes blurry again and then go back just so they get an, an idea of where the exact focus is. Now for this type of uh, focuser, you're probably not going to have fine adjustment. Once you get that, you can hit the focuser lock screw here. That way it's not going to move and you'll remain focused for uh, an extended period of time. Now when you're slewing it around, make sure that these adjustment screws are loose. This would be your adjustment for your altitude. And down here is your azimuth. So what can you expect to see through this telescope? Well, to me, I found that it was great on planets such as Jupiter. Uh, I saw Jupiter and four of its moons, as well as Saturn. I could see the uh, Cassini division. And I also saw Venus as a bright white disk. And Mars was hard to resolve. It was a red-brown star. Now, for deep sky objects, you're going to have to accept its limitations. You're going to need to bring it to a really dark site in order to resolve these faint fuzzies. One of the advantages of owning a small telescope is its portability. In this case, this mount and the telescope are both light. So it's easy for me to carry it around if I wanted to move to the backyard or if I want to lug it around in my car. But the problem is, it just so happens to be its weakness. Because whenever you want to locate an object, you're going to have to touch the telescope, slew it around, adjust the focus. And in this case, it takes 5 to 10 seconds for the vibrations to stop. One way to tell if the objective has multi-coating on it is if you take a look at it at a certain angle, you should be able to see a bluish or purplish hue to it. Now, that's not a bad thing because multi-coating actually reduces glare when you're looking at bright objects. And meat has been known to provide some good uh, optics. This one is no exception, but obviously I'd have to accept some, some of its limitations. Uh, for example, when I'm taking a look at uh, bright objects such as the moon, it does provide very good uh, contrast, but around the edges, I would see some chromatic aberrations. So to round up some of my dislikes about the telescope, the very first thing on my list would be the mount. The mount could be very flimsy. When you're setting the telescope to focus on an object or when you're adjusting for focus, it takes about five to 10 seconds for all of the vibrations to stop, especially at uh, very high magnifications. Sometimes the go-to capability isn't quite accurate. When you follow along the tour and it slows to the objects, even after careful calibration, the object isn't in the field of view. The focuser is made of plastic, so if you're planning on doing some astrophotography and you want to attach a heavy camera to the focuser, it might not be able to handle that weight. Overall, I think this is a great telescope for beginners such as myself because it got me hooked into amateur astronomy and I wanted to learn more about it. Uh, things that I like about the telescope are its simple design. Uh, I like the build quality. Yes, it's made mainly of plastic, but it's not just cheap plastic, it's very, it's very hard plastic. 
Uh, I also like how, uh, how light it is. I can easily fold the legs. I can disconnect the OTA and toss both into the back of my car and drive to a dark site. I also like how it has a 90 millimeter size aperture which just gives it a little bit of an edge over telescopes with smaller aperture size. I also like how it has a go-to capability which allows me to spend more time observing than looking for things.